So for instance, we can think of adding two transformations and it turns out that to do that, all we need to do is add the two matrices. Now, for instance, how do we combine, uh, how do we add two regular functions? Well, we compute one, we compute the other, and we add them up. Uh, for regular functions, that means we're just adding up the two formulae. Well, the same thing happens here for uh, two matrices. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the two matrices. But I need to show you why that is fine, that is correct, or why that is true. Well, first of all, let's see what, what, what are we doing. We're taking two linear transformations, one associated with the matrix A, one associated with the matrix B, and we want to add them as functions. That means that once we apply that to a vector x, what we need to do is figure out what LA does to x and add to that what LB does to x. Notice that this implies that, first of all, both LA and LB have to be able to transform the same kind of vectors, since we're using the same vector to begin with, and then they have to provide a vector of the same size, or we will not be able to add up the two images. That implies that the two matrices A and B have to have the same dimensions, otherwise we will not be able to add them. So this is a little bit of a restriction in the sense that in order to add two of these linear transformations, they must have the same domain and the same codomain, which is something that we don't normally see in, uh, in calculus. Okay? But now let's see, what is the definition of these two uh, new vectors? Remember, how do we compute LAX? We multiply A by X. And how do we compute LBX? We multiply B by X. Therefore, what we end up with is AX plus BX. By the distributive property of matrix multiplication, that's the same thing as A plus BX. And therefore, as I claimed at the beginning, to add two transformations, all we had to do is add the two matrices. Because now what we have obtained is just the linear transformation associated to A plus B. And that confirms, of course, that A and B must have the same dimensions. Otherwise, we cannot even add them. All right. Can we multiply two transformations? Well, no, not really, uh, because uh, multiplication of functions, um, it can be done because we can always multiply two uh, algebraic expressions, but here we cannot always multiply two matrices. Well, we can actually, but not really in the sense of uh, the definition of a linear transformation using a matrix. Uh, you may want to try and see what that would mean. So doing A times B times X, what does that exactly mean? However, what we can do with that matrix multiplication is use it to check a different kind of combination, something that we also saw for functions, and that is composition. Uh, just like we use to compose two functions, uh, two regular functions, uh, we can compose two transformations. And it turns out that what we need to do in order to obtain that is multiply the matrices according to the regular multiplication rules for matrices. What does that mean? Okay, so let's say that we have uh, two linear transformations, LA and LB, and we want to compose them. Uh, what does that mean? It means that once we apply to a vector x, we first are going to use LB, and then whatever we comes out of LB times x, we're going to apply LA to it, which means that what that uh, formula means is we're going to compute LA of LB of x. Now, notice that what that means is that the composition of these two functions must have as domain the same domain as LB, but then the domain of LA must be the codomain of LB, and then its uh, eventual codomain is going to be the codomain of A. Okay? Now, uh, I may be a, a little bit. Uh, you may be a little bit uh, confused by this um, fast use of domain and codomain. Once again, as usual, you may want to rewind and listen to it, pausing whenever necessary, or just hold on to your hands. I'm going to show you what that does to the matrices, and you'll understand what the, all these uh, uh, these requirements about the dimensions of the matrices and the domain and codomain are. So let's see. We first apply LB. What that means is we're multiplying B by X. All right. So this will give us a new vector. And now we have to be able to, to apply LA to BX. Okay? So that means applying A to BX. So again, in order to do all this, the dimensions have to match suitably, just exactly in the same way that they match for a matrix multiplication. At which point, we do have, uh, we can use the associativity property of matrix multiplication to rewrite that as AB times X. And that tells us, again, that this composition of two linear transformations is the transformation associated with the product of the two matrices. So once again, in order for this to work, 
the number of columns of A has to equal the number of rows of B so that the product can be done. Well, that means that the domain uh, of A has to have the same dimension as the codomain of B, otherwise things will not work out. Okay. Now notice also that for this composition there is no commutativity. There is a commutativity for addition, but there is no commutativity for uh, composition and for two reasons. Number one, composition usually is not commutative. And number two, matrix product is not commutative. So we have a double reason for knowing that this uh, kind of combination is not going to be commutative.